Hey guys, it's Landon Blake from Redefine Horizons, and this is the third video and a little set of videos I'm doing that shows you how to export RTK GPS vectors and total station vectors from Trimble Business Center and run a least squares network adjustment on them in Starnet. So, in the last video, we got into Notepad++ here and cleaned up this file that TBC exported. It's much cleaner now. We've got our coordinate listing here, and we, we kind of condensed and combined our total station vectors. So there's one little thing to do left to do in this file. Uh, Starnet has this dot instrument command that allows you to specify a particular instrument. So I'm going to put that at the top of my file. And what that does for us is it, it will apply this the error settings for this instrument to these measurement values. And so I can show you that hopefully in Starnet. So if you go to your options, instrument library, you can see I've got Landon's Nikon in here. I can edit this. And these are the error constants that I set up for my particular instrument. So those will get applied now to this text file instead of the default. Okay. I also set up RTN R10 for our GPS file. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to the top here so those settings get applied. So if it doesn't see that, it will apply the it will apply the uh, the just the default project settings. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and open up I've actually got this. This is the main DAP file for the project here that it creates. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and copy this out. And uh, I'm going to come back to microsurvey and just paste this in. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to test it to see if we have any errors. So I'm going to run a data check on it. And looks like it looks like it did good. So I didn't I didn't get any uh, errors here and it actually ran an adjustment. Okay, which is pretty amazing. So because I have both these checked now, it's, it's going to run the adjustment. I'm going to make sure I hit the right button. I did hit the right button. All right, so we're going to just go ahead and you can you can adjust the network with cluster detection. That's going to tell you if you have two points you know, real close to each other with a different number, but I already cleaned that up in my data, so we're just going to go ahead and run this. Okay, and so it's saying, hey, Landon, you got some problems here. We couldn't converge in 10. 10 iterations here, so there's something wrong with the adjustment. Okay, so what you can do is you can come down here and just look at some of these values and get an idea of um, where you have problems. So the first thing I'm going to do here, so I may have a typo in my DAP file. So I'm just going to say, I'm going to uncheck the GPS and just adjust the total station data and see what happens. Okay, so there is a there's a bust in my total station data. Uh, there's a there's a some type type of there's a typo of some kind. Let's run the GPS and see what we get. Okay, so it's not going to run the GPS because it doesn't have coordinate values. So I'm pretty sure the error is here in my DAP file, my main DAP file. So I must have goofed up on a I must have goofed up on one of these. Uh, at from two values. And so what, what you have to do at this point is I need to go into TBC or go into the field notes and see if I can figure out which one of these is busted. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, find the error, and then uh, we'll come in and fix it and rerun this. All right, so right off the bat, I can see a problem I've got here, and that is uh, this information right here. This is 171. This is bad data. This does not match up with this horizontal angle. So I'm going to delete that. So the proper data for this 257.12 is this 106. So I just, I was misaligned there. And then it looks to me like I've got a, a backside in here because I've got these two horizontal angles are the same. So I'm going to delete this row and then just make sure that this slope distance matches up with this angle. And it looks like it does to me. Okay, but this doesn't look right. Again, this is a... We just I got some data that's not lining up here. This 172 doesn't belong to this angle here. So it should be this 148. Oop, let me undo that. 
So I just wasn't careful when I condensed my total station data, and it looks like I got some stuff. Oop. I got some stuff that was off a row. So, so you want to make sure when you do this that your your slope distances match up with your uh, with your horizontal angles. All right, let me check this. Uh, let's see, I got a 257.13. Should be a 106 again. So that's why you make a copy, right? And you save your original data. So I'm just going to paste the correct slope distances that I know match up for those values. And then let's check these bottom two. Those look good. So this distance matches this angle. 68. Okay, so the, the bottom two match. So I just I was off one line, it looks like, on the top. The top set of uh, four vectors. All right, so we're going to see if this uh, does any better. So I'm going to run the check here. Okay, so we're getting the... Didn't find any problems. We're going to go ahead and run the adjustment. Again, we're just using the total station file. All right, so now, so now we fixed our problem. So what it's telling me is, hey, you've converged in three iterations. That's good. Okay. And then what it's telling me here, so I've got really good errors on my distances and my angles. My zeniths are a little, a little sloppier than I want. Um, but that's because I've got really short sights. Uh, these distances aren't very long. So I'm, I'm, I've got some slop. I don't think I've got a typo. I think I've just got some sloppy zeniths because of the way my network's designed with those short distances. So let's go ahead and, and review what we've, what we've got here. We haven't incorporated the GPS data yet. So this is just telling you what your... Uh, it's giving you some information about your project and the project settings. This is telling me about what my instrument error settings are. Okay, so this is the default. This is the error settings for the Nikon. It's not showing the GPS because we haven't included the GPS in the adjustment yet. It's telling me, hey, you fixed these two stations with these two coordinates. And you've got three free stations. Here's your measured angles uh, with their standard errors. Here's your distance observations. Here's your zenus. Okay. So converged in three iterations. I've got five stations. I've got 18 observations nine knowns i've got nine redundant observations okay so this is important right here so it's telling me hey you exceeded the upper bound of your chi square test so that means it's finding a little more error than i modeled so i probably need to go back in and look at my error settings and so we'll do that So then I'm going to come down here and just look at my residuals. So I'm looking for really big numbers here. So this is my horizontal angles. Yeah, 30 seconds. That's not, I don't, I don't super love that. It's a little bigger than I want. Slope distances look pretty good. I got one here that's out six hundredths. That's a little, that's a little large. Uh, but I, there's no blunders here. And then my zenus. So you can see I've got some fairly big values on my zenus, 54, 34. Again, that's because of the. Uh, that's because I think because my sights were real short. Okay, so then it's giving you your error values. Okay. And then it's telling you how uh, how large your ellipses are. So this is this is not super fabulous so what I want to do is I want to go in and see if I can adjust my error settings a little bit so I'm gonna go into my instruments for my company and I'm gonna tweak this errors on my Nikon a little bit I'm gonna put in a little bit of PPM error and then uh, I'm gonna bump these up because I got a network with short sights and uh, I know my zenith angles aren't this good, so I'm going to bump that up. I don't really want to mess with these center error, centering errors. I think they're probably good. I'm going to say OK. Let's run this again and see if we can get it to pass the chi-square test. So it looks like it's still 
still not passing the chi square. So I'm just looking over this data. All right, so we still got a problem in our data set. I got to come in and look at this. We might we might still have a typo. I can't remember. There might have been one rod bust on the on the uh, data here. So uh, let me uh, let me pause the video and we'll, we'll go see if we can figure out. We got one more typo in this data file. All right, so went in, went back in, looked at my data, my notes, and I realized that uh, it appears this is a bust. So this uh, the party chief that did this work didn't. He raised his rod here and he didn't drop it back down. So this should be a 5-2. So he's only got an 8-5 when he's looking at 5. So these two records should have a 5, but the, but that one should not have a 5-2. So we had a rod height bust in our data set. So you don't want to do that when you're trying to do a network adjustment. So let's rerun this and see if, see if we get a better result. Okay, so now I've passed the chi-square test. You can see down here. All right, so that makes me feel a little better, and my errors look much, errors look much better. Okay, so let's come down here and look. I uh, still my distance errors look a little high, but let's go down and look. All right, now I'm I'm way. So if we come up, come up to the top, and uh, come down, I'm just looking at my standard errors here. These are my observations. Okay. So it looks like I've, I may have a distance. I may still have a distance problem here. So we'll, we'll look at that in a second. You can see how this is way higher. So down here in error propagation, I like to see this. This is good now. So this is the errors in feet on my coordinate values. And you can see I'm less than 200 on each of these, uh, including the elevation. So that makes me feel really good. And you can see the error ellipses at 95% are way better too. So looks like the biggest one I got is for 500s by 400s. So considering that I had a really cruddy network design, I think this is, a, this is pretty good results here. All right, let's see. I'm going to just pause this video and go in and double check these distances and make sure I don't have a have a busted distance. I think we're good, but uh, I'm going to just go in and, and make sure that these values here make sense. All right, I think we're good. So we've got a, a good network adjustment. And again, the way I'm determining that is I'm looking at these error ellipse values. Okay, these are for, for what I was doing and kind of the cruddy network design we had with some really short distances, um, you know, everything here is less than 500 of a foot on my error ellipses. And again, on my error propagation, uh, you can see the, the biggest value I've got here is 200 by 200. So this is a good, good adjustment. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, this video is a little long. I'm at about 15 minutes. Is, we're going we're gonna to stop this video, and then in the next video, we're going to go ahead and add our GPS data, and we're going to see what happens to our network adjustment.